Hi, this is Bob Gallico. Just over 50 years ago, on the 9th of March 1960, a play entitled A Majority of One opened at London's Phoenix Theatre, a production in which I was fortunate to be involved in. I say fortunate, well, I suppose any actor would want to have been in a London West End production. No, I say fortunate for me because it became one of the happiest times of my acting career. Reasons coming shortly. It was directed by the gifted Wendy Toy, with whom I had happily worked with previously in a TV play and a commercial, which I guess is how I got a part in Majority. The play revolves around the relationship between a Jewish widow and an Asian millionaire. Originally produced on Broadway in 1959, the Asian character was played by Sir Cedric Hardwick and the widow by Gertrude Berg. Gertrude Berg was the creative genius behind the radio serial The Goldbergs, which aired from 1929 to 1946 and transferred to TV from 1949 to 1956. She wrote and directed every episode, as well as starring as Molly Goldberg. When the American production company behind a majority of one were casting the national tour, they offered the part of the widow, Mrs. Jacoby, to Molly Picon, a legend of the Yiddish theater, with a brilliant career as actress, singer, and songwriter. But having spent time in England, including topping the bill at the London Palladium in 1938, she was eager to return there to play opposite Robert Morley in the London production of the play. And so it is that I got to work with and know not only two theatrical legends, Robert Morley and Molly Picon, but some of the nicest people I've ever met in my years in the business. I got to know Molly and her husband, actor, writer, director Jacob Kalich fairly well during the run of the play, a rare privilege. Rehearsal time, two weeks of pre-London, the London run of five months, and then a few weeks of post-West End touring. And it was this last bit that gave me my greatest joy. I had a minor role with one appearance in the London run, but I was also understudying Ted D'Souza in the Juve lead. And as he declined to go on the tour due to other commitments, I got to play the role. Three weeks of playing opposite Robert Morley and Molly Pecan. Stage heaven. Although playing a scene with Robert Morley did call for total and complete concentration and discipline, he could be very naughty and try to make you laugh. He would get this mad twinkle in his eyes. Fortunately, I was able to resist. But what a total joy to act with these marvelous people. As I recall, the pre-London run was a week in Newcastle at the Theatre Royal and naturally a week at the Golders Green Hippodrome. Why naturally? Well, as Londoners would know, Golders Green was and is the center of the Jewish community in London. And who in that community would not want to see Molly Pecan in person? The theater was packed every night of that week's run. One of the bonuses of working in a play with Robert Morley was the Saturday shows. It was a tradition of his that in the interval between the matinee and the evening performance, everyone would gather in his dressing room for a fabulous meal. A particularly good idea as actors in a play don't often get the chance to socialize and get to know one another very well. It certainly engendered a great cohesion amongst the cast. And the food was great. I got to know Jeffrey Matthews, who played the role of Eddie, and we became good friends. When we were told where we would be taking the play for the post-West End tour, which was announced to be Liverpool and Birmingham, I asked Jeffrey about Birmingham, as I knew he had done a lot of radio work there. I knew Liverpool. I'd been there a few times. He said, you'll hate it. I said, ah, it can't be that bad. You'll hate it. Well, now, ordinarily, he might have been right. Birmingham in the 60s was not the most glamorous place in the world. And, well, the digs we stayed in were a bit dismal. It rained all week. And the theater we played in had no really steady entertainment policy. One week it would be a play, the next week a skiffle group, the next week a quiz show. Well, the result was that on the matinee, I experienced an old theatrical cliché. At one point in the action, there were more people on stage than in the audience. But none of that could spoil for me the joy of my time on stage with Molly and Robert. And as a bonus, that week we got to see Ben-Hur for free. I've always treasured my time with two warm and wonderful people in my profession. And I know that I'm not a minority of one who feels that way amongst those who knew them.
for Radio Irish, I'm Bob Gallico.